a gripping novel about broken promises, migration, mother-daughter relationships, sisterhood. Stay tuned for a chat with the author of River Woman, Jamaican Donna Hemans, up next on Carib Nation. I'm Doris Dean. Every one of us knows someone who left the Caribbean to come to the United States for a better life with the promise that they will send back for a young child. Sometimes that child never makes it to the United States. Today we are going to talk with a Jamaican author, one of our own, who is based right here in Washington, who has written a book that encompasses many issues addressed in the Caribbean. One of them is migration, another is broken promises, another is mother-daughter relationship, the relationships between women. So we'll sit back today and let's talk a little with Donna Hemans, a Jamaican, about her book titled River Woman. Welcome to Carib Nation, Ms. Hemans. Thanks for having me. It's interesting that this book covers so many issues that affect so many people in the Caribbean and many who have left the Caribbean and come here. Let's talk a little bit about some of the issues that you set out to address. How did you set out with this book? As uh, I recall, you may not have set out to talk about as many issues as you did, but uh, that's probably the, the art, the craft of writing that uh, you develop the issues as you go along. Right. Tell us a little bit about the core of the book, how did you come up with the plot, and what was, what was it that you wanted to get across to your readers? I started writing River Woman in 1996, and around that time a young friend of mine had recently left Jamaica, and she had left her young child behind. And while she was here, she was working and she was in school, and each year she kept saying, next year, next year. Um, she would bring her son to live with her. And I began thinking about not only her response as a mother, but also how the child would have felt at a later point in his life, whether he would begin to think of himself as an unwanted child or whether he would truly understand why his mother had preferred to leave him behind and, mm -hmm. you know, the reasons behind his being left behind for such a long time. Mm -hmm. And it certainly is an issue that it affects so many of us because everywhere I turn there is somebody who's telling me that that is their story mm -hmm. and um, it's not exactly what I set out to write but it's a story that I ended up writing. What did you set out to write? I, when I started writing I was thinking about Jamaica. I was thinking about whether I should be going back to Jamaica and I was remembering just different um, different experiences I'd had, mm -hmm. uh, one of which was driving through Jamaica and watching women wash their clothes at the river, which is exactly how River Woman um, begins. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, I'm not certain what I set out to write, but I certainly wanted to write about my experiences to growing up those in Jamaica. Experiences. Right. Where did you come from in Jamaica? Let's get a little bit of a background on you and give us a perspective from which you're coming. I grew up in Brownstone in St. Anne um, and left Jamaica when I was 16. Um, very different life from the um, narrator of River Woman. I left my parents behind in, uh, when I was 16 because my parents are still now living in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The young woman in the novel, Kelly, is left behind by her mother and she's right. raised by her grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, now the story goes that we start off with this young child that was it's, it's a, what's interesting is the layers that right. you developed along because you've got a mother who left her child 
and that child is longing to come to the United States. But the, the, the history goes back where the mother was a teenage mother herself, and she then had a teenage daughter who became a mother. Right. And the cycle is perpetuated. Um, the tragedy, of course, is that this child who was left behind has given birth to a young child and loses that child at the river um, while washing clothes with other right. women. Talk a little bit about the emotions that go with women working at the river and, and the sisterhood that you, you develop so beautifully here that develops among women and how it can range from camaraderie to jealousy to abandonment to betrayal. Right. Let's talk a little bit about that. I think, um, well, certainly when River Woman begins, um, all the women are gathered together and they're washing clothes. And I think in a lot of those situations um, in the Caribbean, not just, at a, not just at a river, but when women come together, it usually is a kind of sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And But, you know, in the novel, it falls apart pretty quickly, partly because this young woman, Khalid, had an opportunity to leave, to migrate to the United States, and the women immediately begin to say she watched her child drown because they know exactly what was holding her back. Yeah. She had to make a decision about whether she should leave her son behind as even for a short did. as her yeah. mother had left her, mm -hmm. even for a short period of time, or if she should stay behind in the situation that she had been living in all mm -hmm. along. And so the camaraderie falls apart for that simple reason. The women in some ways feel guilty mm -hmm. about this child's death and they also are jealous because a young woman has an opportunity that they don't have. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk a little bit also about migration. Uh, we all know, as you said, the many people who have left the Caribbean with the intent of going back. We have a situation in the Caribbean today where people complain about vagrant teenagers and people feel that there are a number of young people with no direction in the Caribbean. I'd like to know what social message you think this uh, sends and, and what is this, whether you think this has created a, a, a culture in the Caribbean, uh, a, a whole category of people who are left to fend for themselves and who have a an attitude as a result of right. having been left? I think it certainly does, and it has created a whole new culture. In Jamaica, um, children who are left behind by their parents are now called barrel children mm -hmm. because they are living off the stuff that, that comes in send. barrels that um, parents send. Yeah. Basically, I guess in some ways to make up for the emotion emotional um, aspects of, a re of the relationship that's absent. Mm -hmm. And I think what it also does is that it creates a group of people who are sitting back and waiting for barrels or waiting for you know, things to be sent to them, mm -hmm. and rather than working for the things they need. Right. And um, you know, certainly there are some families that need help from their relatives abroad, but there are also too many people who are just simply waiting for that mm -hmm. help without trying to make do for themselves. Yeah, and that makes and it, it uh, very difficult because the people who are constantly striving to make these barrels, right. and they, I don't think they understand how hard they're working right, they and what is keeping don't. them from sending for them in the end. Right. Uh, exactly. So it becomes a vicious cycle. Right. Uh, as far as as we go on to some of the other issues that you addressed in the book, um, mother-daughter relationships. Uh, and we have here an interesting scenario where we have a, a mother who comes back and doesn't really know her daughter right. and does, doesn't know how to address her, how to communicate with her. Right. Let's go through the, the process. We don't, we don't want to tell everybody exactly what's in the book, but. Um, to set the stage and give, give an, an idea of how this develops over time, right down to the funeral of her grandson when she okay. goes back to Jamaica. After the drowning death of Timothy, 
uh, Sonia Kelly's mother returns to Jamaica for the funeral and when she comes back she finds that the entire town has turned against her daughter partly because they think that Kelly the young mother watched her son drown mm -hmm. and Sonia has to make a decision she has to decide whether she should listen to what the town is saying or whether she should ask her daughter what happened mm -hmm. she doesn't ultimately ask her daughter she listens to what the town's women have to say mm -hmm. now the town's women have as you said, turned against uh, Khalid because they feel that this kid was lying there sleeping and she didn't do enough to, to save it. But isn't there also some guilt on their part? Um, some of them feel guilty, hopeless, and realize that maybe their own jealousy right. has led them to react the way that they have. Um, Talk a little bit about the, the village interaction as we know it from the, in the Caribbean and how this is something that becomes a, a major part of, of our life as well. I think pretty much in the Caribbean, uh, well in some areas in the Caribbean because they are isolated, because some towns are isolated from the larger towns, um, people have found a way to work together and to do a lot by themselves without depending on the government or depending on politicians to come in to make changes work. And so I think one of the things that used to happen in the past is that farmers would come together and each one farmer would help another to Cre um, to farm a piece of land mm -hmm. and they would move on and help others bit by bit and so I think in some ways or in some areas you still have that kind of helpfulness or that kind of togetherness but it is also perhaps falling apart because not e each person doesn't have the time to help others as they used to mm -hmm. um, at some other stage and so and also well what happens in River Woman is that we have a small town which is isolated and which has come together over the years because of that isolation. Mm -hmm. And the, women, the people of the town view themselves as isolated and you know they tell the story about the town's demise and how the town has remained the way it has. Um, and basically that story is what informs the character of all the people in, within the community. Mm. Um, also when you in the, further down in the book, we, we address how Khalid herself feels right. about having lost her son and the doubt that it puts in her mind as to how much this relationship with her own mother has impacted on that. Then we have the grandmother. Right. Um, so that we have Sonia who left and her mother who also has an input. Talk about the role of the grandmother uh, in the lives of young people as we knew it and what is happening now. And I, in some ways I think it, um, it's probably um, somewhat similar and in a lot of cases um, grandparents are raising children mm -hmm. either because the parents can't for a number of reasons either because they're on drugs or they are just simply incapable of raising children or in the case of the Caribbean because the parents have either migrated to another country or to another town mm -hmm. and so what we have in River Woman is a grandmother who's raising um, who has raised a granddaughter and who perhaps has to raise a great grandchild mm -hmm. and who doesn't really want to raise a great grandchild because she thinks that a child should be with its parents. Right, and she felt that she's done her job she's as well. She's done her job. She's yeah. raised her children, right. raised a granddaughter, and she shouldn't have to raise a great-grandchild. Yeah. Uh, another issue that, she, that was raised in the book, which was incredible to me and how coincidental it is, we have today an issue of priests <laughs> who have been accused of molesting right. young people. And one of the references in the book is to, uh, as you clearly said in the book, someone who should not have even been a priest in terms of the way he behaves. Look, uh, let's look a little more closely at some of these relationships um, among people in the, young people in the Caribbean and older men with younger women um, and, and some of the issues that, pre that the role that a priest plays in the lives of some of these people who may not have a male uh, role model in the home and, and what that betrayal means and then tie that together with the broken promises. Right. 
Um, well, Khalifa in this novel is betrayed one, well, firstly by her school, because she had passed the common entrance exams and she had gone to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And when she became pregnant, she was sent away and not really given an opportunity to return to finish her education. Mm -hmm. She was secondly betrayed by the minister who, when he found out that she was pregnant, visited her, gave her some hope, made her feel that, you know, her life could continue. Mm -hmm. But when she goes back home and he comes to visit her at home, that whole that idea that hope falls apart because he he believes that she's guilty mm. and so he leaves her without anything and um, you know I'm not certain that there's an overall message from my part about <laughs> ministers in general but um, you know we I guess as people um, we need something to hold on to mm. and in a lot of cases we hold on to the church yeah. and there are very many people who will hold on to religion or will use religion to get themselves out of a situation mm -hmm. without necessarily looking at how their actions are really affecting the particular the situation that they want to get out of. Right. Um, but you know certainly um, priests or ministers in general are not innocent people as we're seeing mm -hmm. now you know with so many scandals erupting day by day right. from the Catholic Church um, you know they're all humans mm -hmm. and you know if we are looking at them or looking to them for guidance we may also fall along down the same path you know yeah. where they're heading and the broken promise which is the, the core of this whole right. thing and that is that um, the, the term soon soon I'll be sending back right. for you soon soon, soon. Again, there are a number of children who are affected permanently right. by this sense of betrayal, mm -hmm. this, this idea that uh, they can't trust anyone. And, and we have a number of people who develop serious relationship problems right. as a result of this. How do you think this is another uh, issue that, that is an important part of what is happening in the Caribbean today? Because those of us out here hear so many complaints mm -hmm. from those in the Caribbean about what is happening to youth today, about how uh, it is so difficult to trust people as they used to before, that right. the village mm -hmm. mentality is no longer there. To, to give us a broad look as how you see the message from a book like yours can address some of these issues and help some of these young people maybe understand that uh, this is not the way it has to be, this is not the way it must be, but there, there might be a way to move on to the next level. Um, I think in, in some ways, well it certainly comes back to the family in a whole number of different ways and we have you know the family has broken up and has fallen apart bit by bit over the years um, either because parents have migrated or because um, you know parents just weren't there in the first place and I think that if we are able to understand or able to make the young people understand you know the family the core of the family then we might be able to get rid of some of those problems mm. because a fam the family unit, I guess, should be the first place that you know like an individual comes, whether the person is in pr in trouble or not. Should be able to trust. Yes. Should be able to trust somebody within the family, mm -hmm. and um, very many young people, or some young people, don't think they can. Yeah. Um, within you know, in River Woman, Kelly certainly has her grandmother to whom she can turn, and her grandmother stands behind her from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. But she doesn't have her mother, her mother. and yeah. she's waiting. When her mother returns, she's waiting daily for her mother to, to see ask if she her, will make this the, right to see if her mother will move. make that step. Yeah. Um, she's waiting for the fulfillment of that promise. Mm -hmm. Both the promise is spoken and the promise is unspoken, because um, there certainly is an unspoken promise between a mother and a child, of course. and Kelly is waiting for that bond to mm -hmm. be reformed. And you know, it never happens. They never happens. Choose a part for me and read for our listeners just one part of it sure. and uh, we will come back and talk a little bit more about your family okay. and uh, how you grew developed into this level. Okay. I'll read um, from the first chapter. I held him. His body was limp in my arms, not yet rigid but stiffening slightly. 
there was nothing in his face, nothing in the eyes that somebody had closed, but which I opened slightly with my fingers. The water from his clothes dripped down my arms, streaking and tickling, mingling with the soapy water on my body. I fell to the ground. The sand and the rocks hard against my legs and bottom. Timothy lay in my arms, his head rolled back as if he were just looking at my face, as if he had been looking at me and fallen asleep with my face printed on his mind. My salt water mingled with his river water. I whispered the name Mommy Khalid, the way he said it as if one name was never enough. I held his body tight, and when the car came, somebody led me to it. I remember Timothy's body, soft and wet against my chest and the tickling of water from my eyes, rolling over my cheeks, falling gently on the wet body of my son. This is what I would have told my mother if only she had asked. Mm. And that is most appropriate, that uh, she was waiting right. just to be able to express herself, and, right. and the, the mother just never could bring herself to it's that. Asked. Let's talk a little bit about the family. As you mentioned, the, the core of the family. Um, talk a little bit about your parents, what kind of people they were, what did they do, and how did they influence you? Mm -hmm. um, well, my mother is a teacher, and my father has his own business, and I grew up with um, two sisters. Mm -hmm. And I think pretty much, um, you know, we certainly had a, uh, you know, our network, um, too many women in the house, but, you know, our <laughs> own network anyway. Um, and, you know, there were a number of young people who were always in and out of our house, um, boarders who were going to high schools within the Brownstone area, mm -hmm. and other young people who my mother took in from time to time, um, t you know, to help them out. And so I guess I have a pretty strong sense of, of family mm -hmm. and um, certainly stick to that family unit. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you have um, any kind of a pressure or nudging into any particular uh, profession. I know that education is very important, of course, right. as a child of a teacher. I'm sure that you, <laughs> uh, we always say that in the Caribbean, the worst thing is to be the, mother, the child of a teacher or the child of a policeman, right. because you have no wriggling wrong. rule. But um, I'm sure that education was important to them. And very often in the Caribbean, our parents would tell us, that you need a profession that you can hold on to, a profession that you can open your own door and have your mm -hmm. own business. And so law and medicine come to, for, come to the fore very mm -hmm. often. And sometimes young people in the Caribbean have felt that they've been led into these mm -hmm. uh, professions against their natural desires right. and, and branch off into something else. What was your situation? Um, well, mine was, I guess, very different from most Caribbean um, people's experience. My parents certainly pushed education, um, mm -hmm. but I was not told I had to become anything in particular. I wasn't pushed in any one direction. Um, certainly, um, you know, when I got to, the, to grade 10 and I was choosing my subjects for um, CXC, I chose um, I did geography, social studies, history. Um, my older sister had done the sciences, my younger sister did the sciences, and I was not, uh. I wasn't pushed either way. I was allowed to choose what, you know, made sense for me, and mm -hmm. I was very happy about that, because yeah, I certainly, it certainly, it certainly natural helped. for you right. to do what you like to. Right. You were a bright school student, I take it, and, and yeah. I gathered, uh, <laughs> who worked very hard, very diligently. Yeah, very much so. Um, what was it? that you liked most about school and what was it about writing that mm -hmm. attracted you? Um, I certainly have always liked to write. I didn't necessarily think of myself as a writer, but I read and have always read magazines. Any magazines that I can find, I would always read it, mm -hmm. partly because I was interested in how stories came together and how a magazine was put together from the photos to the research to the articles. I never understood it, and I wanted to understand it. And so I think in some ways I was leaning towards that path without mm -hmm. really knowing that that's where I was heading. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in high school, I entered every or pretty much every writing competition that that I could, um, and mostly, you know, there were essay competitions mm -hmm. for, um, you know, at prize giving you'd get a nice little book. Um, but you know, I certainly did that not because I loved competition, but because I liked doing it. Mm -hmm. And it certainly, I guess, you know, now I can see where that path was leading. But right. it's not something I was thinking about while I was doing it. Now, I neglected to mention that this is your debut book. Right. Uh, that you yeah. have obviously done very well. It has been. 
uh, publicized right. uh, within the Washington area and outside. What sort of a response have you had? Um, I have had pretty good responses. Um, mm -hmm. Just about everywhere I've been, you know, there have been a lot of people, especially people from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. who have been just so happy to see that story. So many people who have said, you know, that's my story. Mm -hmm. You know, I had been left behind for so many years. There's one woman who I remember saying, um, you know, the story was so hard for her to read because her mother's name is Sonia, and oh, she was left behind for a number goodness. of years. And I, you know, I, you know, I just I felt it, you know, yes. for her. And I, my goodness, yeah, so that must have been very, very strong. Right. Yeah. Uh, I also met someone who said that she went to one of your readings and was very impressed with you oh. as well um, from listening to you. Um, what do you have on the burner for the next time? Are you working on well, something else? Yeah, I'm certainly working on a second novel, which I hope to finish sometime soon. It's um, also set in Jamaica, and it's a story about a young woman who's 17 years old and who is sent to become a domestic helper. Um, mm -hmm. You know, she's sent away by her grandmother, which certainly is something that happens um, yes. you know, in the Caribbean, because there's so many people who don't, or so many parents who are just happy that they're daughters or their children are in a different situation to or get an opportunity right, to, that they didn't to do have. something better. Right. Yeah. Um, in terms of branching out further, mm -hmm. have you gone to the Caribbean or do you plan to go to the Caribbean with this or are you going to work with Washington as your core and hope that it spreads out eventually? Um, well, I have, I've done some readings in Jamaica um, mm -hmm. already, and I, you know, still, I'm always thinking about whether I'll be moving back to Jamaica or moving to the Cari any other island in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't yet made that decision, I haven't decided completely, but um, certainly it's something that I would love to do, or yeah. love to do again, um, mm -hmm. partly because I think that there's so many ways of reaching young people sure. and just being able to show them that there are other opportunities, other steps they can take, I right. think certainly is helpful. And books are the windows on the world right. that gives certainly. you an opportunity. Do you have a favorite author? Is there anyone that influenced you particularly? Um, Toni Morrison, I mm -hmm. think, is still one of my favorites, still at the top of my list. Um, mm -hmm. Beloved is my favorite book, oh. and I also really like Sulu. Another favorite is The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy, uh -huh. um, which is a very interesting book because it touches on so many different issues about um, women right. in particular, right. and, um, and also the caste system in mm -hmm. India. Okay, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, and good luck with the book again. The title is River Woman, and it's available. You have a website, right? No, I don't. You don't have a website. Okay, so we, we can give it the name of the, the um, it's in bookstores publisher, everywhere. and it's in bookstores everywhere. And the author is Donna Hemans. Thank you so much again for coming in and talking with us. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Thanks again for watching Carib Nation. Until next time, I'm Daris Dean.